Hi, welcome back. So we're continuing this video from the last video where we were trying to manually extract the parameters for the transformer. In this one, we're going to use the Q3D extractor and just add a Q3D model on top of the old model. So let's get into it. I'm just gonna go back to here and try the Q3D extractor because that's supposed to make all this stuff easier anyway. So if we add one of those in, we're going to need our geometry again. So I'm going to go back to one of these original ones and we'll get all of these things here. Control C, go into this one. I'm just going to click in here, Control V, and then you have to wait for a while. Oh, there it is. Didn't take too long. And then we can go back through these and right click. Let's see if we do the air in the region. We can right click and do view, hide and active view. Let's see. So I'm trying to save it now. I'm not going to get rid of the history. So I think in here we're supposed to, I don't know how much this really matters, but design settings enable this material override and we can add a solution here. We want all these things, the uh, capacitance, resistance. So for this solution frequency, I'm just gonna lower it to one megahertz. I feel like even like 10 kilohertz is probably fine for what we're trying to do with this transformer. So for the excitations, we're gonna do face and We'll do a sign excitation, make these top ones source. We'll call this primary P. We'll do a constant voltage. So in this bottom one here, sign the excitation. And we'll make that a sink. And we'll do the same for the secondary. Now it's automatically filled out some nets here. We can check out the validation check. So it said these aren't assigned to nets yet. So I'm just going to write here and do auto identify nets. Okay, so it made a primary and a secondary net. And I think that's good. The other thing we can do is right click on this setup and add frequency sweep. So we can give it a couple different frequencies. I'm going to do a single point sweep. I'm just going to do like 1 kilohertz, 10 kilohertz, 100 kilohertz, and 1 megahertz. And then I'll just get rid of the rest of these. I guess I might as well go back in here and check all these boxes so we save the fields. And we'll try this again. Simulation validate. So it says it's good to add a minimum of five passes. I'm not too worried about that. So let's just try analyze all and see what it does. All right, so that looks like it finished in 20 minutes. So not too bad. Let's go ahead and plot some of the results here. We'll right click here and do matrix report data table. There's a bunch of interesting stuff in here. I'm just gonna make a new report for all of it. We can check it out. So this is the DC inductance, resistance, AC, inductance and resistance. And I think that's it. So let's check it out here. We have the capacitance. This one's kind of tricky because this is in that Maxwell matrix. And they have that here. It's this form here. And uh, they do have a way to change it to what they call the spice matrix. Show you that in a second. How about this one? So this 3.5 picofarads is actually uh, the mutual and uh, self capacitance added together. And then this one here is negative of the mutual 
capacitance. And that's a standard thing, this Maxwell capacitance. I guess it's not like ANSYS Maxwell. It's Here's a white paper on it I'll uh, put in the description. But it's kind of the same as Comsol had that too. It had the Maxwell capacitance and then the other one that they transformed it to, they called the mutual capacitance table. ANSYS Maxwell just calls that the spice capacitance table. So the next one here, this looks like some conductances or something. So the DC inductance, this one's pretty interesting because this is 9.00 microhenries, which is exactly what we would get pretty much with this calculation of the AL of 90. And then we had 10 turns squared would be 9,000 nanohenries. So that would be nine microhenries. So this DC one's really close. If you look at the difference between these two, 936 and two here, so that's 76 nanohenries, which is what we were seeing when we were doing it manually, as far as the leakage inductance. So if we go here to the DC resistance matrix, it looks like we got 22 milliohms. So that makes sense. And it looks like the change in frequency is not it's just kind of interesting because for DC, they've still got the frequency. I don't know if that makes a lot of sense. But for the AC, it uh, makes it a little bit higher here for the microhenries. And this is kind of interesting here. So we have 263 minus 194. That's 69, which is the same value we got in COMSOL. So that's pretty interesting. And uh, for the AC resistance, basically get the same 22 milliohms below 1 megahertz. Then it starts getting higher. So these values are looking very similar to the COMSOL values, with the biggest difference being the capacitances. And I'll just point out here, if you go into setup, back to this profile thing here, well, there's these different tabs here. When you right click on the setup, these are all just the different tabs. So you can go to matrix, that just takes you to the matrix tab here. And this is where you can select Maxwell or Spice matrix. So you can see this is saying 3.5 here and minus 2.7 for the Maxwell. And then if you do Spice, you have 0.71 and 2.8. So this is a fair amount less because we're getting like four to five for these, both of these capacitances in COMSOL. The other thing while we're here that I'll point out is, let's see, oh, here's the mesh statistics, convergence. Let's see, I guess it's not in here. There's something around here. Yeah, so if you right click on that, you can go to this export circuit. And this gives you a similar thing to what was in COMSOL, where you can select these different things that you want. DC resistance, we can do AC inductance. And um, that's mainly what we want here. Capacitances. I don't know that we really care that much about this conductance. We can take that and then you can export circuit and it exports it as a .cir circuit file. We can just do preview for now. So you can see this is like a spice style net list here. All right, so here's the final comparison. So I put in the numbers here for the ANSYS Q3D extractor and then up here we have the COMSOL model. So you can see we got the magnetizing inductance 9.67 versus 9.19 and then leakage is 69 so that's exactly the same resistance 21 versus 22 and the capacitances are where we have the largest difference so this one's 0.72 picofarads and this one's 4.7 and this one it's 2.8 picofarads versus 4 picofarads. So I think this Q3D extractor works pretty well. And I'm not even going to bother trying to finish doing it manually because that was it's taking a really long time to try and get those simulations to run and uh, having convergence problems and numbers that weren't totally making sense and then having to figure out how to integrate over the fields to calculate stuff. All right, so that's the Q3D extractor and it seemed like it worked pretty well. I think the verdict is that it's hardest to extract 
uh, the parameters using ANSYS Maxwell manually, and it's uh, easier using COMSOL manually, but the easiest is using the ANSYS Q3D extractor. So that concludes this whole introductory to ANSYS Maxwell. I'm also looking at COMSOL multiphysics, so I'll have some videos on that if you want to check that out, compare and contrast, and I'm going to also try and look into some open source options in the future. So thanks for watching. See you next time.